Church Life, and as, uh, as you know, yeah, I come from Estonia. I'm working currently as a developer advocate at Oracle Labs, which is uh, on the project of GraalVM. Oracle Labs is a research and development uh, facility within Oracle, and its main goal is to, well, research things that can potentially change the way how we do programming software development in the future, and incidentally also kind of try to convert this knowledge that was gathered into successful industri industrial projects uh, for, well, Oracle. Uh, yep, and we're going to talk about one project of Oracle Labs called GraalVM. How many of you have heard about that? Okay, excellent. How many of you are developers? Very cool. Since GraalVM itself is a polyglot uh, virtual machine, so it can run multiple different languages. So we're going to do a very quick test. How many of you have Java as the main language they do day-to-day -day development? Excellent. JavaScript? Two people. Haskell? No? It's a, it's a great language. So, okay, uh, other JVM languages, Scala, Kotlin, Groovy. Surprisingly, those were named killers of Java many, many times. Okay, cool. So, uh, the audience is mostly Java developers uh, doing, I presume, Java software development day to day. Whew. Before we start going into technical details, please take note that you should not make any forward going business decisions on any content that you hear from this presentation. Thank you. Anyway, uh, GraalVM. GraalVM is, uh, in a nutshell, in one line, it's a high-performance polyglot embeddable virtual machine capable of running mm, different languages, different programming languages. So it doesn't, uh, and it was designed that way from the very beginning. In this session, I'll try to show mostly things that are relevant for Java developers. Uh, GraalVM can also run JavaScript, uh, Python, Ruby, uh, R to some extent. Uh, it can also run native languages that are compiled to LLVM bitcode. So uh, just with that alone, you get the range of programming languages that are supported, which is quite high. So we're going to focus on the things that are Java specific. If you want to go deeper into the technical details uh, about how it works, why it works this way, why should you trust that it's supposed to be working this way. Uh, Oracle Labs is a research institution, right? And the research institutions, what they do, they produce academic papers and they publish them in conferences and journals which are peer-reviewed where other academics and professionals actually read the publications, right? And they. Uh, try to judge if uh, the things that are written are true or not. So, uh, unlike uh, things on industrial conferences, very much. So, and obviously, if you if you want and look, for example, for this paper through the citations, you can follow back into the the, the roots of what has been researched in the GraalVM project, and you can find different areas uh, and find the academic side of the story if you want to do that. If not, here's a, a very short industrial introduction. GraalVM, what it can do? It's a polyglot VM, so it can run the languages that you can see on the slides, and it's embeddable. So there are multiple modes in which you can actually execute the final program. The main one will be running in the JVM mode as, uh, as a normal Java process, and for that, GraalVM will use uh, OpenJDK builds. It also embeds the Node API, so you can run Node programs just with GraalVM. And also, the runtime uh, can be converted into a standalone native image, which could be run just like a blob of binary information. And that uh, ability to be converted to a native image allows GraalVM to be embedded into native and Java applications. So this way, GraalVM is embedded in Oracle database, uh, and it's embeddable as a plugin in MySQL database. So, uh, and you can run those languages, uh, which namely currently means JavaScript, inside your database. Uh, 
this is the high-level architecture. How it works from the inside, it has components. Right? At the bottom of the whole thing, we need a runtime that will actually execute things and will provide necessary components for, for any runtime. So say, threat shuttling or garbage collection, because we would like our languages to be managed. Uh, and code caches, all that infrastructure should come from somewhere. And it, well, it makes very little sense not to stand on the shoulder for giants, since we have uh, the open sourced virtual machine, which is state of the art, that provides that, the JVM, it builds on top of that. Then the essential part of any virtual machine is the compiler, right? We write code in a high level language and it gets converted into iteratively lower level representation until it reaches the machine code, which actually then is executed by machine. So the compiler, inside the Graal VM, there is this thing called Graal compiler. And it's, it integrates with the JVM through the JVM CI, JVM compiler interface. That thing was added in JDK 9, I presume. And we have builds of JDK 8 where the JVM CI is backward. So GraalVM will run Java 8 and uh, into the future. Through that, through just being able to plug in a third party compiler into the JVM, we can run on top of the GraalVM normal uh, Java applications and JVM applications. If it compiles to Java bytecode, it can be run on the JVM. If it can be run on the JVM, it can be run with Graal compiler because it's a native uh, thing to the JVM. And then on top of that, we would like to run other languages and we would like to have a way to implement uh, the language semantics and the compilation very efficiently. So to do that, there is a project called Truffle. And it looks a little bit like this. So Truffle is a framework for implementing, implementing managed languages. It provides you API to create an AST abstract syntax tree interpreter. Uh, and that interpreter can then later be very efficiently compiled with the Graal compiler to the machine code. So for implementing a language on top of the Graal VM, you don't need to actually implement the compiler yourself. You don't need to implement certain patterns and intrinsics and do the hard stuff that takes a lot of time. What you need to do, you need to implement an interpreter uh, of, of a tree, so, which is a fairly uh, much easier task than creating the full runtime. Through Truffle framework, GraalVM can run Ruby uh, with the Truffle Ruby project, R, JavaScript, and Python. And then there was an interpreter for LLVM bitcode. Right? So LLVM is a compiler tool chain. You can compile native languages into this intermediate representation, kind of like J JVM bytecode. Uh, and then it was created to, to, to do the optimizations on that intermediate representation. Now, inside the GraalVM, there was an interpreter for that. And it uh, supports LLVM, so you can run native things. For example, you can run native extensions to the dynamic languages. If you were JavaScript module, calls a native extension, you can run that through uh, LLVM interpreter on top of GraalVM as well. So this allows uh, GraalVM to be a polyglot runtime. All the languages share the same representation and of the data structures in memory. So the optimizations are applicable throughout the languages. There is no serialization barrier to pass data from one language to another. So it's very efficient that way. Now, Working on this high-level uh, representation of the language semantics, right? Working on the abstract syntax tree interpreter level allows GraalVM to introduce very high-level optimizations to that. Imagine on the left you have a just interpreter that hasn't been executed yet. Your program is a tree, and you evaluate that as you would normally do in the compiler course in the university or in high school. You start with the root node, and then you evaluate children, and then you, when you past the whole tree, you evaluate the node. During the execution, GraalVM will collect the profile of what, what are the types of the nodes, what is data that is passing through this tree. And it can specialize the tree execution very efficiently. So as we progress to the right, to the right, uh, we, we, we can have a different version of the same tree representing the same code, but it's specialized for the execution of the code of certain types. With that, you can eliminate many checks, and it can be more efficient. And then after that, you, you use 
the concept called partial evaluation, and we'll have a demo of that uh, where you mesh together ev uh, execution of different types of trees, and then you cr create a very efficient binary that doesn't dispatch from node to node, but it's a fully compiled code. Now, pr probably you're wondering what benefit it does uh, to have this very high level representation of languages. Can you actually be efficient? Is it reasonable to run LLVM bit code through, through an interpreter rather than just compiling that to native code? How many of you think it's unreasonable to run an interpreter on the code that is compiled from native? How many th of you think it's reasonable? How many have no opinion on the subject? Okay, cool. So the rest are just sleeping. Now, again, so it gives you, uh, this, those high level optimizations give you uh, quite a performance boost in certain contexts. Uh, in other contexts, not so much, but the, the goal and the vision of the GraalVM is to be the best and most performant runtime for all the languages. So if we take Java code, GraalVM should be the best and the fastest runtime uh, for Java. So we've done the experiments, and this is the slide from the same, same paper that I referenced before. Uh, as you can see, we can run Java uh, on par with the JVM, with Hotspot, which is a, quite a great feat because Java, the language, and the compiler, uh, they can agree together uh, and they have this um, good knowledge about which patterns Java programs produce and how to optimize those. So we can run Scala code about 20% faster than, than stock JVM because Scala code produces different patterns of bytecode, right? So the Scala program will look a little bit different. So the, the C2 the compiler has a harder time to optimize that efficiently. And some high-level optimizations kind of, uh, your program benefits from those high-level optimizations a little bit more. Languages which, which are more dynamic, like Ruby and R, we have a significant boost. Uh, JavaScript. Uh, we run on par with, uh, I think, V8. Uh, somewhere a little bit uh, slower, somewhere a little bit faster, but almost, almost on par, which is, uh, gives us a great hope for the future. Native as well. So very surprisingly, and that was very surprising to me when I started uh, to investigate in GraalVM more, is that GraalVM, in an interpreted mode, like through the interpreter, can run native code almost as fast as the actual native executable, which is mind-blowing. And then you can mix all of those together. So performance is really great. If you deal with applications which can benefit with, from some additional throughput, uh, you might want to look into that. Now, GraalVM is a very ambitious and very large project. It can do very many things and uh, not even everyone on the GraalVM team uh, within Oracle Labs knew, for example, those top th th 10 things that you can do with GraalVM. We recently, in the late April, we released a version called 1.0 RC1, kind of uh, trying to get to this 1.0 release where uh, GraalVM will kind of start being a proper industrial project. And uh, to go with that, we started writing more content about what, what you can do with GraalVM. So if you are just interested in what's possible, this is probably a good point to start. You can read the blog, it's, it takes some time, but you can run the languages, you can create your own languages, you can compile things to the native image. Uh, the tooling, it's very interesting, because Truffle as a framework, right, it sits between the actual implementation and your language definition. So by leveraging GraalVM, you can have the normal common tooling that is applicable to other languages, like, for example, I don't know, JavaScript, Chrome, Debugger, uh, work on programs written in other languages, because it, it, it integrates with GraalVM in this intermediate level. Very interesting. However, Let's, uh, if you, yeah, we're gonna show, I'm gonna show demos of mostly Java things uh, a bit later. Uh, if you are wondering how to get that and uh, you are itching to, to start 
doing uh, random crazy things with, with GraalVM. It's an open source project, so the source code for that is available on GitHub. And you can see there are several different projects that are uh, different components of the GraalVM. So the, the core in the compiler and ability to generate native images are in the Oracle slash Graal repository. The language packs for different languages are scattered through other repositories uh, under the Oracle or GraalVM users on GitHub. But the main thing is the code is out there. The code is open sourced. Anyone can check that, take that, build that, even though the build procedure is currently a little bit more sophisticated than running Gradle build. But you can build that, and then you can also contribute. So uh, yeah, it's a very interesting time in the world where uh, platforms are mostly open source projects. Now, if you don't want to build from the source, because normally people don't want to do that, uh, unless they want to kind of actually contribute to the project. Uh, you can download the binaries. There are two flavors of the binaries available currently. There is a community edition, which is a, you just download the tar from GitHub. And there is an enterprise edition, which includes some additional performance uh, improvements, the compiler phases, uh, and it includes some additional stuff for the native images to be embedded and everything. You can download that from the Oracle Technology Network uh, it's free and completely available for devaluation purposes. Uh, so if you are going to experiment, I would recommend experimenting with the Enterprise Edition. Uh, that's it. Uh, the Community Edition is available, the binary is available for Linux only currently. Uh, we got a lot of questions after the release. It's not the master plan to convert everyone to Linux and finally make the Linux year, uh, Linux on desktop happen. It's just there were no available uh, OpenJDK built for uh, OS X for Macs, uh, which we could use as the base for that binary. So you can build that yourself if you want, and it will work. But we just couldn't put it out there as a binary. So it's complete. It's it's available now. The community edition and the enterprise edition, they're equal in the capabilities. They, like, they can do the same things. It's just the enterprise edition will be uh, faster at running code. The language packs, as I mentioned, are a third party distributions. When you download the distribution of GraalVM, you unpack that, it looks a lot like normal JDK distribution. Uh, and I'll show you in, in the console in a little bit. And then you have the Graal updater utility, and you can install different language packs. So if you want to, the JavaScript, Java, native, it, those three things are included in the, in the image, in the distribution that can, you download. Ruby, Python, R uh, are available as language packs. So you have to install that with running a single command. And now, one of the very cool things is Graal, the compiler, has been included in OpenJDK, uh, I think since version JDK 10. It has been included as the experimental JVMCI compiler. So if you run Java 10 or later, and you would like to experiment with Graal, the compiler, and see if it can speed up the execution of your code, you don't have to download the Graal VM, the the distribution, you can just run your Java command with a couple of command line options. So it's an experimental option in the OpenJDK. And you use the JVM CI compiler. And you can point that to a jar where your compiler resides if you wish to write your own third party compiler. But by default, just this will execute Graal, a version of Graal compiler that has been imported into the OpenJDK. So, Graal is here to stay, you know. Things very rarely disappear from Java. <laughs> so uh, it's gonna be very interesting. So uh, one company that are experimenting and running Graal in production are Twitter. And Chris Tallinger is a, an engineer on the Twitter uh, VM team. And he does excellent presentations about how they, how they used Graal compiler 
to, to speed up the execution of uh, Twitter microservices. Uh, I think they are mostly written in Scala, and he goes with, he tells the whole story how they started, the, that there were some issues, how they collaborated with the things, show some benchmarks and the graphs, how uh, things got faster, and the, the final reason in where why do, do we want to do that is the faster your program runs, if you don't host your hardware yourself, but you use a cloud or something, you spend less cycles, less cycles mean uh, less money to spend on the cloud bill. So, uh, if you're interested in using the open source uh, Graal compiler, uh, there is information available about that. Now, there is this kind of duality between two projects, OpenJDK and GraalVM. Those are two separate independent projects which help each other, right? There is no, no competition or like wish to consume one another. OpenJDK brings Graal compiler from the Graal VM, uh, and it's a good thing. Graal VM builds on top of the OpenJDK builds and brings that uh, as a runtime for, for uh, Java bytecode, uh, and it's also a good thing. Graal VM also imports other runtimes, so Node.js and R. Uh, it, it, it incorporates more things than just Java, but in a nutshell, those are two different projects. They have different vision where they want to be, and thus uh, some different trade-offs. For example, OpenJDK probably, as a consumer of Graal compiler, will not run the bleeding edge of the Graal compiler. Right? They will incorporate a certain version, test that, and, and be very sure that that particular snapshot works well for the OpenJDK. And, and GraalVM, the technology can go faster uh, to faster. That's it. So different project, different release cadence. When Java 11 will come out, we GraalVM will provide the builds on top of the JDK 11, and we'll see where we will go from there. So now, when you run your programs, and I'll try to speed up a little bit. Uh, to actually show you code and demos as well. If you run your uh, Java code, there are two modes how you can run uh, your programs on top of GraalVM. In the JVM mode, when, where you will start the full JVM and it will load the bytecode and it will get compiled through uh, different compilers, right? Interpreter, C1, uh, C2, Graal. Uh, or you can build your Java application or uh, application of JVM bytecode, right? So Scala application or Kotlin application into a native image. So uh, it's compiled to machine code, and then you, uh, the result will be a blob of uh, a blob, right? A binary file, and you can execute that. So normally, if you think about that, your your hotspot, your JVM is pre-compiled into native code, and then you dynamically execute Java code on top of that. So with the native image compatibility of GraalVM, you just kind of mesh that together, and you compile ahead of time to the machine code. You can still dynamically execute uh, dynamic languages on top of that pre-compiled uh, binary uh, if, you, if you wish to, but being able to compile to native images gives you a way faster startup because you don't need to load the components of uh, the JVM and a lower memory footprint. So the VM that is used, the virtual machine that is used to compile to native images, uh, it's called Project Substrate VM. It's a virtual machine written in Java. Uh, you can look the source code on GitHub as well. Uh, and uh, it is currently, it, it has limitations, right? It doesn't. It cannot compile any arbitrary Java program into a native image, right? There are other commercial uh, JVM implementations that are uh, fully compliant with the Java specification, uh, which can compile any Java program ahead of time. GraalVM native image currently is not there. There are limitations about dynamic class loading, uh, some serialization, uh, some reflection, some things you need to configure manually. So. It's not, this, uh, the native image is not the fully compliant JVM, 
Why I'm saying that? Because there are a lot of misconceptions about that as well. When, you, when, when I say that you can run your Java programs on GraalVM and any Java program will run on GraalVM successfully, on the JVM mode, in the JVM mode, on the JVM, yes, in the native image, maybe. We are working on expanding what is, uh, what is possible, but there could be current issues if you, if you experiment. Now, in order, saying that also, uh, there are programs, non-trivial programs, that you can actually compile into a native image to get instant startup and, and to get lower memory footprint. So uh, things like HTTP server for Scala or things like HTTP program server uh, written closure uh, compiles very fine. Uh, there is uh, a blog post written by, by, by somebody not on the GraalVM team, that they compiled both HTTP server and HTTP client into native image. Uh, and it's a fairly small one. Now, you can run native apps on top of the native image. So there are programs that can be successfully compiled. If you're wondering, currently you cannot run Spring Boot apps uh, as a native image. We are working on that, and in the future releases, we will support that, but not currently. Whew. That's it. Well, this is a very short introduction of what GraalVM is, what are the components, uh, what are the languages that are supported, and now let's go and dive into the actual demos and see, see how it works. So it's high-performance polyglot uh, language virtualization layer that is embeddable across the uh, whole technology stack. Uh, so how many of you are interested in the performance aspect? Very cool, majority. So we'll start with performance. Uh, I have a project, and it's, it's, it's called GraalVM Demos, and it's available on GitHub, so you can run those uh, sample applications yourself. And there is a thing called Java Simple Stream Benchmark. Uh, if, you, if you look at the code here, let me just uh, make it visible. It's a very simple benchmark, right? What it does, uh, it's written using the JMH, uh, so the normal way to execute the benchmarks. Uh, very recently, uh, uh, JMH got some additional changes to support GraalVM as the proper JVM uh, implementation that respects the compiler hints and everything. So uh, we can run benchmarks reasonably well. That being said, any benchmark can produce data, and you need to interpret that. And sometimes it's not easy. So you need to understand what you're doing. But let's look at the numbers. It's a simple benchmark. We have a list of array uh, numbers, array of numbers, and we just execute a normal array, uh, normal stream operations. So how many of you are on Java 8 and later? How many of you are writing uh, stream operations day to day? Like maps and folds and reduces. How many of you still write loops like for int i equals zero? Very cool you'll see a different benchmark or you experiment. So stream operations are fairly popular now, and you can find that modern Java code will look like this. So let's run this, uh, the, let's run this benchmark and have this uh, thing prepared and built just before because it takes some time. Now, uh, wait. Uh, if I want to run my, my Java code, let's look at, at the thing before, LS. Uh, I have my GraalVM. It's an enterprise version. I have downloaded that. If I look at the uh, bin directory, you can see that it resembles a normal Java distribution. So you have the JavaAC and JavaP and Java Commander, uh, but you also have other executables like JavaScript or R or uh, LLVM interpreter or native image. But in a nutshell, this is normal Java Home. So you can export your Java Home thing pointing here and your operating system will, will deal with that normally. So I did that. Now, I would like to run this benchmark, and I will start running this benchmark uh, without, without Graal first, just to show you uh, the difference. So I will disable the JVMCI compiler. This will completely disable the use of Graal in this. And since it's a normal uh, JDK distribution on which Graal VM is built, it will just run normal compilation with uh, C2 and, and going forward. So let's run it. I think it should take about 40 seconds. While it is doing that, I'll show you the numbers later. Let's look back at the code. 
And what it, what it is doing here, it executes a couple of different operations. So it, it, it creates a lambda for one map and the second map and the third map. Those are different operations. They are method calls, right? So what this benchmark kind of shows that GraalVM is sophisticated enough, the compilation process is sophisticated enough to inline things very well. Uh, very well. It's the third iteration. So you can see on the JVM, on the stock JVM, uh, without the Graal compiler, I get the score about 200 milliseconds per operation, right? To run one, one uh, invocation of this test method, I, I, get, uh, I get 200 milliseconds. Now I will run that with Graal, so without specifying the minus uh, JVMCI, and it will sh don't, not show you the numbers yet. So while it runs, how many of you think Graal will be faster on, uh, at, the, at this benchmark? How many of you think it will be on par and slower? Why would I show you a benchmark with, where, where it's slower? <laughs> no, it will be faster. But keep in mind, so just when you will see the numbers, this is the JVM execution, right? So it is a highly optimized runtime. People have spent countless hours making it fast. And performance boost in 1%, 2% is a big deal, right? 2% on the JVM is mind-blowing. This does not happen. How much faster do you think Graal execution will be? 10%. 50%. Twice as fast? Let's see if the numbers are there. So the Graal VM, an average score for executing one instance of that loop, takes 10 nanoseconds. Let me show you. 200 nanoseconds. 10 nanoseconds. That is what, 20 times? So while I don't want to say that you will drop GraalVM distribution into your uh, production environment and you get like tenfold increase in performance, that will probably not happen. And you've seen the graph on the uh, benchmarks, the industrial benchmarks, the um, boot performance boost on Java code is not very significant. There are snippets of code, there are parts of code which Graal can optimize mind-blowingly better than the existing JVM, right? If you write the normal modern Java code rather than the code that was written in the benchmarks uh, several years ago, tight loops doing uh, mass computations, if you use stream as API or if you do that, you can get very substantial performance benefit, which is very cool. Don't expect 10x at any program, but you've seen that. No, no cheating here. At some code, it can be. If you're, if you're writing small sample benchmarks for a living, you can get much faster. I want to show a different example here. Uh, so this was the example. Why it works very fast here is because it inlines things very well. Now, I have a different class here uh, that works with colors. Uh, it's self contains, so there is a color implementation here. What it does, it just, in the main loop, this is not the proper benchmark. Uh, this is not how you benchmark things. But what it does for you is uh, it executes a loop a couple of times, and it creates a plane of colors, and then it runs, uh, it runs a for loop for that plane many, many times, doing computations with colors. So if I run this code, run, let me just check if there are any configurations. Yeah, we are using the JVMCI compiler, so we run this on GraalVM. Uh, I just want to show you the numbers, and I will not compare this to stock JVM, uh, but I will introduce a change to this code. Come on. So it optimizes things. You have to note that the initial timings there are a little bit higher than the actual timings at the end. So Graal compiler takes longer time to warm up than, than the current JVM, right, uh, than, than C2. It needs to compile parts of the Graal compiler itself. It needs to gather some different type of information about the profile. So it takes more time. But if you need, if you're interested in the peak performance, uh, you, you will get there. And it's not like hours that it needs to run to, to compile the things. Uh, but uh, it starts a little bit slower. Now, you can see that we, we, we are running that and we converge kind of to 500 milliseconds per, per 
invocation of a loop. Now, I will introduce this change to the thing. I will do this conditional here. So while we are traversing this plane, what we did before, we did some operations with color. We created the color object and we added things and we, we multiplied and we did that hard uh, work, the computation. And, now, and then we put the color somewhere into the, into the global memory, right? Before the color was just an instant local, local, local variable, right? So it didn't escape anywhere. But here on this line, we, we escaped the color to the main memory. Now I will do that under a condition that it's a, just a diagonal in the, on a plane, right? So only for a few places in this thing, only very rarely I will escape color to the main memory. If I now run this thing, if I now run this thing, what you can see, what you can see, that the Graal will use the thing called practical partial evaluation, no, that's a different thing. It will like, escape, it has a very sophisticated argument, uh, algorithm for escape analysis. Uh, and what it does, it looks at the w things that can escape your local method invocation into main memory. So if they can escape, you need to do things properly. If they cannot escape, if they're just local to you, you can do more speculative optimizations for that. Right? So what we did here, while we didn't change the, the structure of the program significantly, uh, what we did, we introduced this conditional that we very rarely escape the object. Right? So what Graal did essentially, it did this. It moved this whole color thing into this loop. So now, only if the condition uh, is satisfied, you do the hard work. So and you don't need to do that manually. So with Gravium, with the compiler, you don't need to actually write code in the many instances to be more performant, to be closer to the machine and the compiler. Very often, Graal compiler can figure out things. Uh, so, and the three main optimizations that make that fast is the way better inlining algorithm, the escape analysis, and the partial evaluation of things. Yeah, so we can run things very fast. Now, if you are interested in enhancing your applications with different, different uh, programming languages, I have this example here. It's a Spring application. How many of you use, do web applications using Spring? Excellent, almost half. Uh, so uh, a normal way of doing Spring things is just you declare beans, right? You create the beans and, and, and uh, you hide the initialization stuff behind the beans. So uh, while I'm running the Spring application, how do I run this? Run Spring application. Uh, while it starts, this Spring application, what we did, we enhanced that with the, uh, a certain module from the R ecosystem. So R is uh, notoriously known for data science, for visualization of data, uh, and, and, and being a little bit slow and not very widely used in the industry. Uh, what we did here, we took R code, which uses the R package ggplot to visualize the data, and we wrote a simple R script, and then we, in, using the capability of polyglot applications, what we did, we created the uh, string application that creates the GraalVM context as a beam, just running some API, and then it evaluates this file. It evaluates this uh, R file somewhere here, and it assigns this R function into a Spring Beam. So after all that is auto-wired by Spring and kind of supported by GraalVM, what we do here is we execute that function as we normally would execute any Java, Java util function function. And we, we just set the result back. So if you are not an R expert, uh, this function just takes the graph, takes the data and plots a graph in the SVG image. So what this application does, it binds to the local host under load and it queries the same endpoint again and again. And we just take the uh, system load average and pass it to this R function. Now, if I open this application, hope it opens. 
Sometimes it doesn't, but this is not GraalVM to blame. This is my app opening skills. Uh, IntelliJ IDEA says it's indexing something. Hope it doesn't interfere. So, yeah, should be doing there. Should be there. Should be there. Have we started? While it loads, uh, I think something is wrong, uh, but I'm not sure what, and I will not debug it here. So, while, while I GraalVM is capable of running different languages in a single runtime, right? So you can write your code, you can specify your JavaScript one-liners inside Java string and say like, oh, execute that. Or you can have a node application and you have the full access to Java type system. Uh, and you can use Java classes inside your node application uh, in a very straightforward manner. I would not recommend you doing so, right? Like it's, it's unless you have a clear vision why using different languages for, uh, for example, you would like to use R for machine learning or Python for machine learning and use that from your uh, Java process. I don't think you should, you should introduce different languages into your uh, application just for fun. You can do that for increasing job security, but probably not for maintenance of the code. Uh, okay, 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 it starts, it starts. So now what you can see, it continuously queries this thing, and it should warm up in a bit. Uh, and it runs, it runs the R function, it passes Java objects to that R function, Inside, so you can see my data holder is a normal J Java object from, of a class data holder, which just holds a double, double value. And it is passed to that function, which is actually an R function, which is written in this R script. And then it logs some data from this R function using Java logger. So it interrupts back and forth. And you can see the log, log values are coming here. My machine is a little bit in the coma of running all the things. But you can, you can enhance your applications with different, different languages if you want to. If you have a uh, JavaScript module that you are very eager to use, or for example, you use validation on the front end and the back end, and you would, use to, you would like to reuse that code, or if you built your JavaScript front end uh, and you would like to use some information encoded in your Java classes, right? for example, a domain model to generate some components, you can easily mesh those together with GraalVM now. And you don't even have to, 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 to make code that looks ugly. So this is not the best code ever and uses the field injection, but, uh, which is a bad thing to do, but it looks like a normal Spring application, which is very cool to my mind. Now, this is what you can do on the JVM, right? Uh, who is excited about the ability to uh, compile your Java applications into a native image? Who works on things like microservices and who pays for the cloud? Excellent, very few people. Uh, but now, now you can do that. So uh, what I will show you, I will show you an example of an application here. And it's called, it is called external list directory. It's a normal Java class. What it does here, it initializes a JavaScript context, then it evaluates a, P, a snippet of JavaScript. And this is a very cool snippet because it combines a string from a, a JavaScript function declaration and a Java string passed from, from above, right? And then what it does, it just walks the file tree and for every file that it finds, it executes that lambda function, that value, which is the JavaScript function, which is the JavaScript function, which body is a Java string, right? So it's a normal program. Everyone writes those every day. What I can do now, I can now build the native image of that. To do so, I will use, first I will compile that to the normal Java application, and I will, I will use the, I need to specify the Graal SDK jar to the class path. If you use the Java C from, yeah, you do need to do that in order to use the value classes and everything. But then I will execute the native image 
command, which is a, a utility inside the GraalVM distribution. And it will build me a native executable. And it takes a little bit of time, especially on the laptop that is projecting and running other things. So I've built that before. So you, you see that there is ext list dir executable. Uh, it's 70 megabytes. If you, why it is such, such a large executable? Because it includes JavaScript runtime, because we said that we would like to execute JavaScript things. Now, I can run that as a normal, a normal blob, and it runs fairly fast. I can also run that, uh, I can also run that as a normal, as a normal uh, Java thing. So if I do Java x dir list, list dir, you can see it's a normal Java class, so it compiles and it runs, and it takes some time to start because it's a, the JVM takes some time to start. Uh, if I uh, time the execution of this resulting binary, uh, then it's way faster. The things that you can do currently is to compile, for example, common line tools that you use daily uh, into native executables. We know that we are capable of compiling JavaC, so you can compile your things a little bit faster. Scala C compiles as well, and there is the benefit is much higher. Uh, Gradle Launcher currently doesn't compile for a very silly reason. We will alleviate that in, uh, in a couple of weeks, and now it, then your Gradle builds could be faster as well. And the best thing is of, of this is that it's still dynamically enhanceable, since we said that we want the JavaScript function to be, to be provided from the argument here. You can see that, right? We just taken args. So if I just do x list dir, and I give that a fascinating thing called what size plus colon plus name, reverse this, then you can see that the output is the other way around. So what it does essentially, it takes the string at the runtime and it passes that to the JavaScript function declaration, and then it runs that, and it's. The best thing is that it's efficiently compiled through the thing. Now, I have one more demo, which is about the database. You can run GraalVM in the database. How many of you write things that can use database? <laughs> I presume the rest are writing open source libraries or front end. So, uh, GraalVM has been included into the experimental builds of the Oracle database, right? So what that means is that you can go on a certain GitHub page and download a Docker container with that experimental build. You need to accept the license that you, were, you are evaluating that, uh, but you can run that. So I did exactly that, and I ran my container, and it started, and it created me a database. What I did now in this different tab, I SSH into this container. So now I am inside the container with the database, right? What I can do now, and this is fairly mind-blowing, but it's also not so easy to type, so I will be copy, copying snippets. I will be copying snippets. What I can do now is I would like to have, uh, and I will be talking at the same time, I would like to have processing of data where the data is. So I would like to process data in the database rather than fetching all the data to your middleware and then filtering and processing it there, right? Sometimes it is more efficient. How do you spe like process data in the database? You write stored procedures. How do you write stored procedures? You use a beautiful language called PLSQL. How many of you know and love PLSQL? How many of you are more comfortable writing JavaScript? TypeScript, TypeScript is a great language. So, fair enough. What we will do now, we will CD into this uh, directory. And I will show you that you can write your stored procedures in JavaScript, and they will have access to the database uh, model, and they will run inside the database very efficiently. The best part is you don't even have to write your JavaScript yourself. What you can do, because JavaScript comes with a gigantic ecosystem of NPM modules, right? There are half a million JavaScript modules out there. So somebody has written all the code that is, can possibly be written and it's in JavaScript, and it's available over there. So what I will do now, I will 
create a, a JavaScript package, right? So we have a package, and then we'll install a module called validator. So this validator module is a normal module that people use. What it does, it is able to validate strings for you. So for example, it can say if a certain string is in email or not. Typically, you would do that using a, like a regexp this big. So, but somebody else has incorporated that into the JavaScript module, and now what you can do, you can just install that. So we installed the validator module. It's a JavaScript. It's a dynamic language. It has no type information. Your database is very statically typed, right? You have columns. Columns have type declaration. So what we need to do, we need to install the types for that. Thankfully, the TypeScript community has provided types for almost all modules that you can possibly want to use. So now we install the validator and the types for that. Now we have all the information that is necessary to bind together the data model in the database and this functionality in this validator module. I will use this database JavaScript utility to deploy my validator module into my database right here. You can do that from the outside as well, but they just, for the demo purposes, should be in the container. I think I need internet for that. I hope it works. I really hope it works. It's just stuck. And this is the new container, so it doesn't have the validator yet. Let's try again. Oh, this is embarrassing. I'm not sure what's happening, but I'm out of time as well. So I will just show you what it was supposed to happen. And then we would supposed to go into SQL Plus and be able to execute commands uh, for that, and then just use the JavaScript functions as they would be normal stored procedures inside the database schema. So to validate emails, we would just we won't need to write any PL SQL, but we can just call the JavaScript module. And you can do that with all JavaScript code that you write. You can install that in a database. Uh, this functionality is coming as a plugin into MySQL database. So you don't have to use experimental builds of Oracle database to, in order to uh, try this. Uh, hopefully, as time passes, more people will, will try to embed GraalVM. Oh, yeah, see, it worked. For some reason, it take took some time, but it worked. And it installed all the functions. So I'll just run this very quickly, just to show you that I'm not kidding. Right? And we'll validate if it's a proper email. Why is it two? This is incorrect. Something is wrong. I will not show you this anymore. I will go back to the slides. It was supposed to be one. One for true and zero for false. But something is, is wrong. Uh, I guess two means that it's kind of an email. So, what I wanted to tell you, uh, there are many resources that you can look up. The source code is available on GitHub. Uh, there are mailing lists. Uh, there is a Gitter chat that you can, you can use. Uh, the, the things and demos that I showed are available. So you are free to try that on your code. You are free to download and evaluate GraalVM. If you run your non-production Java applications, like your IDE, and you would maybe want to see if it is a little bit faster with Graal, you can run that. Your IDE, your continuous integration server, the actual like, instance of Jenkins or something, compile your command line scripts into native executables. See what GraalVM can offer you, because that very easily could be a future. So, you experiment, you can run your benchmarks if you have them. You try the native image. You should be aware that you can do polyglot apps. You don't have to do that. The kind of reasons and lessons of the clean architecture and balancing things and keeping the code maintainable, they all stand. But you can do that. Uh, native libraries as well. But in, if you experiment, once again, if you are experimenting with new technology and you are trying to figure out what's possible, just go with the solution that shows you what is possible, rather what is cheap. So for experimenting purposes, I suggest you using the Enterprise Edition or just JDK 10. Thank you.
It's so rare that I don't see the timer, but I don't think we have time for the questions. But I'm here all day. You can find me. You can tweet at me. You can come and get a sticker if you enjoyed the presentation. If you didn't enjoy the presentation, you can still grab a sticker. Who am I kidding?